Actually, colleagues, I want to tell you that there are very few dogmas in runic practice and in the Norse tradition in general. And so when we study runes, when we carve the runes and ask the questions of what we do right, what we do wrong, whether or not the phenomenon means something or not, that is perhaps more suitable for some orthodox religions where all steps are determined, where all the canons are approved, where the rituals are a mandatory sequence of steps in space and time. But with runes, it is not so. Runes are very fond of improvisation. Runes love freedom. Runes like it when a person perceives them like an equal and not like a weak before the strong or vice versa, like a strong from a consumerist position towards them. That won't work with runes. They recognize the intent very clearly. Try to understand that. The first set in particular shows that there is a universe that has its own laws, a very powerful system within which we live. We surely could build our lives on the paradigm that man is the crown of creation and the master of all things. But all things would quickly prove that that's not always true. We are interested in getting results. You know, there is a law in magic that says that anything that works is essentially right, whereas anything that doesn't work is wrong. So let's judge by the result. When we get to the Dagaz rune, when we get to the end, we will see which paradigm is more viable.